Once again, this is the Rangeland Principles class at the University of Idaho, and we are at the end of the Rangeland Uses and Resources section of class. And as we get to this section, we're going to talk a little bit about the conflicts and compatibilities of Rangeland uses. And we're going to use an example, and the example is from Rock Creek Ranch. This, this ranch is in central Idaho, and it really encompasses a lot of the challenges and opportunities that you might find on a ranch that um, is, is cooperatively managed and uh, really people really trying to make the best of all that's available in the multiple use sense. So Rock Creek Ranch is beautiful. It's really a collaborative learning and applied research endeavor that is in some of Idaho's most iconic rangelands, some of the, the places that you would think of if you thought of beautiful rangelands of Idaho. Rock Creek Ranch is also in the center of Idaho. If you look on this map, Rock Creek Ranch is right there in the middle of Idaho. So it's a property that is just uh, south of, uh, well, it's just west of the Wood River Valley. And it's, it's cool that it's right in the middle. It's a, definitely a public land ranch. It's a working landscape. We'll tell, talk more about that public lands and private lands mix here. It's unique because it's managed by a committee. It's managed by a collaborative resource management group that is called the Advisory Committee. And we on the Advisory Committee make decisions and suggestions about what should happen or not happen on the ranch. And finally, it is definitely an outdoor laboratory and classroom. It is designed and envisioned to be a place where people can learn and study rangelands of Idaho. Another cool thing that was written in the in, in ensuing documents that created the ranch was that it is designed to be at the intersection of ranching, recreation, and conservation. There's very few places in the U.S. that can say that. This ranch is really designed to try to look at ranching and recreation and conservation all kind of in one piece. The ranch is also unique because it covers most all of a watershed. If you look at this boundary of the ranch, this brown and red line, you'll see that it pretty much covers the whole watershed boundary. So the ranch encompasses nearly all of this watershed and almost none of the ranch is outside of the watershed. So it's uncommon that one watershed would encompass one ranch, but it does in this case. There's also uh, a unique aspect that there's uh, only two main access roads to the ranch. Rock Creek Road goes right down the middle of the ranch, right down through the meadows, right near Rock Creek. It's about a 10 mile road, goes north to south and hits Highway 20 at the south. The other main road is Glendale Road that comes just south of Bellevue and goes straight from the east into this main road of Rock Creek. Only two main access roads. Other smaller roads that go through the ranch have been closed mostly because of the conservation easement that we'll talk about later. There are many conservation values for the ranch. First of all, that it is, has real great value for connectivity because it's an entire watershed. Animals, plants, water are connected from top to bottom in this watershed. It has greater Great scenic value um, and scenic view sheds across the ranch. It's important for wildlife habitat. Sage grouse, both brood rearing and some nesting, but all, mostly brood rearing habitat for sage grouse. The game winter and migration routes are important. The riparian area that's created by Rock Creek is very important. There's beavers that work across the, the stream. There's also, I've seen moose and many other riparian animals that you would expect in those kind of meadows. Because of the stream and other things, the water resources are very important that come through the ranch and then end up in Magic Valley Reservoir. The grazing resources we'll talk about later, but they're important for both wildlife and livestock. Uh, recreation, which includes um, horseback riding, hiking, uh, off-road, uh, non-motorized vehicle use, and hunting, all very important uses of the ranch. Again, it's a whole watershed. The creek down the middle is a perennial stream. The property owners of the, the Rock Creek Ranch, which is Rock Creek LLC, the red boundaries there own the, the water rights to the creek. 
and it's a perennial stream. It's it's not something you could float on or do much more than maybe a, a little fishing and just kind of dipping your toes in the water. But it, it is a perennial stream, which is very important for the meadows that that flow along that whole valley of Rock Creek. Another interesting but not unique, very common situation in Idaho is that it's a mix of land ownerships. It's 21,500 acre ranch, 10,400 of those acres, or a little more, or a little less than half, is uh, deeded acres, meaning that it's owned by someone. In this case, it's owned by, it was owned by the Rinker family, and I'll talk to you, I'll give you a little insight on how that was transferred to other people. About 11,000. And 87 acres is is managed or is part of state and BLM uh, grazing permits. So the ranch includes both uh, federal and state and private land. Again, it's a very common situation in Idaho. The private or deeded land is under conservation easement that that limits development. There is four small areas within the whole ranch that allow even access to building. It's interesting that the initial envisioning of this ranch by the Rinker family was to create essentially a new town site that would complement Haley and Bellevue and would have um, golf courses and, and housing and, and just a place for people to really relax out on the range. So at one time it was designed to be a subdivision and a new town site. I'm not sure what it would have been called, but just this new place that would have been covered much of this whole watershed. And now there's a whole new vision for the place. Um, again, th there's um, public land, both BLM and Idaho state land that provides 750 animal unit months of forage in the form of grazing permits. And the cattle are um, from the University of Idaho at this point, and they come from Nancy Cummings, uh, experimental uh, research area that is up in salmon and so you can see on these cattle in the picture that they have a ui brand on them so so as of today those cattle that raise these 750 animal unit months and the land that is deeded are ui cattle the property most of the property the private deeded property is held under the grassland reserve program this protects rangelands from development and conservation, and it was created by the USDA. Uh, it's a program that really was important in trying to, to keep large landscapes open and, and working landscapes, so therefore it protects conservation values. But it allows and requires grazing use of those properties. The focus of the GRP is on rangeland health. And it's interesting that Idaho is the top state in the nation for GRP enrollment. So much of the range at Rock Creek, as you see here in these pictures, is held and, um, and protected from development by the CRP. Just a little timeline. The Rinker family owned the 10,394 acres of deeded property on Rock Creek Ranch, and then the nature, or I'm sorry, the Grassland Reserve Program in NRCS um, bought the conservation property, the conservation easements in 2014, and that was a $3.78 million investment that we as taxpayers made in keeping this ranch open. The Rinker family owned still the 10,000, almost 400 acres of the ranch and the GRP easements on that ranch. The ranch appraised the value at about 13.4 million. At that point, the Wood River Land Trust and the Nature Conservancy bought the ranch for a cash price of 2.22 million dollars in May of 2014. The Rinker family amazingly donated the other 11.18 million dollars of value of the ranch to the Nature Conservancy, the Wood River Land Trust, to try to keep this land in a, in a working landscape. The Wood River Land Trust and the Nature Conservancy therefore now own that 10,000, nearly 400 acres of the ranch and the GRP easements. And uh, last year, uh, they entered an agreement, a memorandum of understanding with the University of Idaho, so that the three uh, that are hoping to own and collaboratively manage the ranch as key players would be the University of Idaho, the Wood River Land Trust, and the Nature Conservancy.
So in the future, we hope that at least these, prop these key players and others will manage this ranch collaboratively. So the partnership was launched and Range Line Research and Education projects began at the ranch in the summer of 2016, and they continued the summer of 2017. Again, I mentioned that this is a unique place because it is collaboratively managed. The Nature Conservancy, the Wood River Land Trust, and the University of Idaho were the key players there, but we're also joined by the Idaho Cattle Association, the Idaho Rangeland Resources Commission, uh, the Bureau of Land Management, the Idaho Fish and Game, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, Central Idaho Rangeland Network, Routes Unlimited, and several others. And about four times a year, we all sit down and we do go on field tours, as are depicted in this picture. And we try to decide what are the best management practices to move forward on the ranch. So it is a true spirit of collaborative landscape management that we engage in. What are our goals? Well, the long-term goals for management of the ranch focus on protection of sage grouse and big game habitat. We also want to look at working ranches from a research and education standpoint. So we've invested and engaged in several projects that start to look at what about the watershed scale effects of this collaborative management. A particular interest on fish and wildlife habitat, restoration, particularly the riparian area is going on, and also recreation access. These are all parts of the multiple use agenda that we as a collaborative management unit are trying to accomplish. So that's an overview of the ranch. And as the advisory committee in this partnership that's working at Rock Creek moves along, we're going to try to develop and use some of these resources. But the use or development of any of these resources could influence the value of others. For example, there's water on the ranch, there's forage, there's wildlife, there are recreation opportunities. We could develop the wind and sun that are abundant resources on the ranch. And the aesthetics of the ranch, it's a beautiful ranch that could be affected by development of any of these. So the key is to think about how multiple use might create conflicts or compatibilities among the, these major resources. So we're gonna go through those one at a time. The time. If you develop water, um, it's hard to imagine how you might use that water. It's already being used for forage in irrigation. It could be important to camping or other recreation, hiking, where people want to see the water and walk along the stream where it's shady. Uh, one of the groups in the class even suggested we could develop some of the spring water. There's some very active springs. So what effect might that have on other resources? Um, certainly water is important to forage, wildlife, aesthetics and recreation. It's probably beneficial to all of those. Developing it might have effects, especially on aesthetics. Probably has no effect on wind and sun resources. Let's take a look at forage now. Forage is used for livestock. It could be used for hay. Um, that would affect wildlife. Maybe it would be beneficial uh, because it might you know, improve the hay fields or, the, or those meadows, or it could be detrimental depending on how it works, I mean, how it's developed. The use or development of forage uh, could be beneficial to aesthetics. Some people like to see grazing livestock. It could be detrimental. Other people don't. Same with recreation. It could be positive or negative, depending on the person's perspective. It probably, uh, the forage resources can probably be used sustainably and have very little effect on water, or they might have significant effects. So the gray bar means kind of it depends. Probably little effect on the solar <clears throat> on the solar or wind power uh, connections. Let's take a look at wildlife in the center. If wildlife are the wildlife resources developed and used for hunting, or if there's a, a strong effort to conserve habitat or other social values, um, then uh, the the wildlife could have an effect on forage. There, there could be enough wildlife that they would influence the forage and maybe even the water resources, the stream banks, especially there's beaver on the ranch that would affect water resources. Pro or con depends on your perspective, depends on how abundant the wildlife are. It's hard to imagine wildlife not having a positive benefit to recreation and aesthetics. Probably no effect on wind and sun. Aesthetics, these beautiful landscapes of the ranch, probably affect recreation in a beneficial way, but no effect on the other resources. 
wind and sun, that solar um, and uh, wind power that might be developed with the wind and sun resources, um, may be done very effectively and have little effect on other resources, or it could be done in a way that does reduce aesthetics or negatively impact wildlife or negatively impact recreation. So again, it depends on how it's managed and how it's developed. Recreation, depending on the type of recreation, may have effect, especially on water if there's camping or hiking right along the stream, and on wildlife especially. Um, hiking can affect wildlife, mountain bikes, horses can affect um, wildlife, and of course hunting does affect wildlife. So again, not negative necessarily, but it depends. So the bottom line, the end of the story, is that there are many beautiful resources on Rock Creek Ranch, and whether the use or development of those resources affects other resources is just the answer is it depends. Depends on how you manage it, how you develop it. And as we get into multiple use management, it's important to list out how the use of those resources might affect other resources in the ranch.